How's it going everyone? My name is Gianluca and I'm coming to you with my very first video here on YouTube for the Next Gen MD channel. And I'm super excited to talk to you today, but I know you don't have much time because you're studying for the MCAT and there's deadlines all around you, so I'm going to give you everything you need to know on how to get a 130 or above on the car section and I'm going to do this as quick as possible. So if you're still listening and you want this 130 or above, uh, try and keep up with me really quickly, okay? So very brief background about me. The very first time that I sat down to do a practice test on the MCAT, I ended up with a 125 on cars. However, after studying for three months straight, six days a week, 90 minutes a day specifically on cars using this method, I was able to bump up my score to a 131 and that is the 99th percentile and I'm super happy that I achieved it. But therefore, I'm a great example as to why I believe that this whole thing about cars being an innate ability that you can improve, that's, that's total nonsense. There's no way. Uh, you could definitely improve your car score. So if that was the way you were thinking, just throw it out of your head altogether because that's not true. Now the very first thing I want you to do, step one, is you're going to go out and grab yourself some MCAT cars practice books. You're going to get something like the Princeton Review, the Khan Academy, anything you can get your hands on. I know these books are expensive, but they're worth it. And on top of that, you're also going to go on uh, the Khan Academy website and the AAMC official websites and get as many of these practice banks as you can. Now, not all the practice banks are created equally. Some are better than others, so always make sure that you save the official AAMC tests until the very end of your studying. Now, once you've gathered all your materials, that's step one. Step two, what you're going to do is go out and start to work on these three things right here. Gradually, you are going to improve, or you're going to try to improve your accuracy on answering questions after the passages. Then you're going to decrease the amount of time you spend on each passage. And then finally, you're going to increase your endurance. And that relates to how many passages you could do in a row uh, without losing your marbles. Now, the way that you're going to do this is using a method that I developed um, from using a, a similar method that I would use at the gym. And that is the progressive overload style of training uh, that you would use out in the fitness world. And the way that that works is that if I had a goal to go and bench press 200 pounds, and I had never stepped foot in the gym before. What I wouldn't do is walk over to the bench press at the gym for the very first time, lie down, and slap on 200 pounds. It's not how it works, and bad things happen that way. And similarly, you are not going to do that for the MCAT. You are not going to watch a few YouTube videos and go and expect a 130 or above on the test. But what you are going to do is set a very easy goal uh, as, as a baseline and gradually improve as time goes on. So in terms of cars, the very first thing that you're going to do is pick up your practice books or whatever passages you have available and you're going to start off by not timing yourself on the passages. Instead, you're going to just shoot for 80% accuracy on one passage at a time. That is the very first thing you're going to do. So you're going to pick up a passage, read the entire thing through, take your time, understand what the author is saying and write down any words that you have no idea what they're talking about so that you could look them up later. Then also think about your answers carefully when you're answering the questions later on. But the important thing here is that you're shooting for 80% on each one of your practice passages. Now that's step one. Once you've been working on this for a while and you can consistently get 80% accuracy on your passages, you will move on to step two. Now the step two is to now introduce the variable of time. You're going to set it to 15 minutes per passage. Then you're going to try to achieve 80% accuracy again, um, but still one passage at a time. Now, the same thing, you're going to work on this for a few uh, days or however long it takes you, and then you're going to progress to the next thing. Once you move on to the very next step, this is where we start seeing the progressive overload step in. We are going to gradually decrease the time. So this step here is now from 15 minutes, it's to 14 minutes. We're going to keep the same 80% accuracy for now. And finally, we are going to shoot for now two passages in a row. Now the important thing with this is we're building endurance. In the beginning, you get easily distracted reading multiple passages because especially if it's something that you really don't care about. I remember last year reading about things uh, that I hadn't even heard of before and things that were far outside the scope of what I traditionally liked doing. Um, so I, I'd get bored and get distracted easily as a result. So at this step, shoot for two passages in a row and really try and remain focused. Once we're able to reach these goals, the next thing that we're going to do is gradually now decrease the amount of time we spend on the passage by one minute and increase our endurance by one additional passage every time we're able to meet our original 80% accuracy. 
So, uh, if this was our last step, the next step after that would be now we're going to do each passage and questions in 13 minutes, and we're going to do three passages in a row, and also maintain 80% accuracy uh, for each passage overall. Now, after you've been doing this a while and you're gradually improving, originally, uh, eventually you're going to get to a spot where you're able to do nine passages in a row, and you're able to answer each of the passages in 10 minutes, uh, and you're going to achieve that 80% accuracy. Once you are in this spot, you are in a great, great place. Um, however, that is not what you clicked on this video for. What you clicked on this video for was to achieve the 130 or above mark on cars, and you're not going to do it this way. So the very final step is to be over prepared. Once you make it all the way to the end, where you're spending 10 minutes on each passage or less, uh, you're going to fine tune it and make it all the way down to eight and a half to nine minutes is what I personally trained for when I was studying for the car section. And also, I'm going to shoot for 90% accuracy on each of my passages overall. Hey everyone, thanks so much for listening today. I really hope I was able to help you in some way, shape, or form, at least begin the process of studying for cars. I know we didn't get too much into details, but that's not what this video was about. It was about helping you find the right path in studying towards getting the 130 or the score that you want. Um, and, and hopefully you really enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the MCAT, about anything, basically, just feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I really want to get a community started here with pre-meds and with people that want to get into med school because I've gone through the journey and I want to help others too now that I've made it this far. So everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, please comment, share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff that you could possibly do down there. And I really hope to see you in my next video. Uh, thanks a lot and have a great day.